Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I am here with designer artist Ryan Lockett of Red Raven Games. Uh, Ryan, great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I did not realize you would be on top of a skyscraper when you came. It's uh, well, surprising. You know. but... <laughs> I climbed good, all the way to the to top. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I was hoping you could give us an overview of Deep Vents, uh, your newest release. It's got a very different look. I would think than your your typical Red Raven game. Usually, I think of sort of yeah. landscape and then this sort of uh, gorgeous, lush look to it, and instead, you're going underwater. Yep. <laughs> well, it's funny because um, I wanted to be more. It's a more realistic theme because we based it on, you know, an actual environment instead of a fantasy setting. So. Um, I went with, yeah, definitely a different painting style. Um, but so, so in the game, you are building your own deep sea ecosystem. And it was fun to, to work on this because we learned a whole bunch about all these weird creatures. Um, you can see some of them there, like the uh, scaly foot snail. This is like a deep sea snail that it has this, um, uh, I forget the, the term of the, uh, the material it's like a it's the same as your fingernail but it has you can see all these like plates um below the snail anyway <laughs> it's a really weird creature <laughs> okay so yes you're researching actual uh creatures under under near deep sea vents where you have lots of volcanic activity uh where they survive on the heat from that and sort of this yeah. interesting ecosystem there right the goblin right. shark yeah, is a, real um, thing too? a lot of these creatures um, basically live by that little bit of heat they can get off the, the deep sea vents. So, Okay. So we've got the environment that the game is taking place in. What are we actually trying to do? What do we represent in this world, and how does the game progress as we play? So the goal of the game is to build the most successful deep sea ecosystem. And... Um, You'll be doing it every turn. You can pick one of these creatures or features to add to your deep sea ecosystem. And um, uh, the, uh, it's, it's a hostile environment. So the, the creatures will attack um, each other. So players can attack one another. And so players have to decide if they're going to focus on more of a building strategy or more of a um, like aggressive strategy. And all these, all of the creatures in the game, they have different abilities, and you can combine them in different ways to, you know, to build a different strategy. Okay. Um, so so let me just point out there. that um, the tiles actually, they're a little bit weird, but um, the, so right where it's, the deep vent is actually supposed to be just slightly turned to the left. Um, trying to let's see like 30 degrees yep perfect oh no you want the point down yep just like that <laughs> okay so so maybe um, run us through the icons on the starting tile and we'll build yeah that. let's talk about this so this is the the starting tile the deep vent tile and um on the left that's the ability of the tile and uh then you have the title, and then on the bot on the uh, the bottom of the tile there, you can see the two. Those are art. Those are called archaea. They are um, uh, that's kind of a, a food supply for some of the creatures that live uh, in the deep sea in these deep uh, vents, and uh, it's the also the um, um, the money in the game and the victory points. So. <laughs> Whoever has the most archaea at the game, at the end of the game, is the winner. And then up in the right corner, you can see there are like a couple of symbols. Those are the attributes of the tile. So you've got um, this tile has heat, uh, bioluminescence, and rock. Okay. All right. And so that's what we're starting with to build on our foundation. Where do we go from there? Yeah. So. Um, Let's just, let's start with the first turn. So, um, is it Lincoln that's, uh, or Eric, is that you that, that's that got, that's in charge there? <laughs> Nikki, Nikki is moving things. Hello. Okay. Around. 
Hey, Nikki. So go ahead and grab that scaly foot snail. Yeah, and then place it next to any side of the tile. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so when you the first thing you do on your turn is select a tile, and this, and then you run your whole economy. So every tile activates, and each tile can either you can either do you can either use the ability on the tile, which is called trigger, or you can uh, grow the tile, which is the the bottom right um, symbol. So, um, actually, Nikki, would you mind just turning that tile so the points are down, those two tiles? Yeah, perfect. Exact, exactly. Okay, so the first, so you run the, everything activates uh, from top to bottom, left to right. So we'll start with the deep vent. Um, the, so on this one, since we, we don't have any archaea on the tile, so we'll just have it grow. So, put, so place two um, archaea from the bank on the tile. Yeah. Oh, on the uh, deep vent tile, actually. Yeah. You can see the two, the, there's a picture of two little archaea on the bottom. Yep. And then um, for the scaly foot snail, um, could you rotate that one just a little bit to the right, actually? Um, so that the name is um, on the bottom left corner. Yes, perfect. Yep. Okay, so sorry to, to, to go over this. It's just kind of important that they're <laughs> lined up correctly. So um, we'll, we'll also have that one grow. And the scaly foot snail, um, you can see it has a symbol in the grow area of uh, there's rock and heat. So for every adjacent rock attribute or heat attribute, the, the scaly foot snail grows one. So go ahead and grab one cube and place it on, on the snail. Okay. And it gets only one, even though it's next to both rock and heat. Oh, it, it is. Needs I didn't, yeah, it actually does get one for each. You're right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's the end of uh, player one's turn. So we'll go to player two. And... Um, if you wouldn't mind sliding the tile row down so that there are six showing. Yeah. And then go ahead and take that first tile off. Yep, perfect. Okay, so when you select a tile, if you if you don't select the first one, you'll notice the first in the first turn, we just picked that one, so it was free. But if you want to select any of these other tiles, you have to pay one Archaea from each. Uh, you have to place one Archaea on each tile that you pass. So okay. let's pick the uh, the goblin shark. So you'll have to take, yep, exactly from your supply. And then go ahead and take the goblin shark and place it on any, any side there. You can even put it, um, yeah, you can put it like that or you could put it below. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Okay, and then we do the same thing. So uh, since there are no archaea on either tile, then we will want to grow each of them. So let's put two on, uh, Go ahead and put two on the deep vent tile and let's see the goblin shark grows one per one. rock so you'll get one on that tile okay so any questions so far or comments no it's moving along okay. we got okay okay so uh, obviously um instead of um playing player three and four. Let's just go back to player one again so we can get things a little more interesting. So uh, player one, why don't you go ahead and just pick one of those tiles? So you have to pay for the nice. ones you pass over. Yeah. So I would actually recommend placing it so that it touches both tiles. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that tile grows first. So that's, uh, let's see, it gets one archaea. You can see in the bo bottom right corner. And then the deep vent tile. So we have a choice here. We can either take the, um, everything off or we can grow two. Um, you might wanna take everything off if uh, it looks like you're running out 
And because if you run out, then uh, if, if you lose too many, then you can actually, um, uh, you can actually lose the game early. So um, let's just add two more to that one. So some of the titles can serve as a bank in a sense where they gain interest over time and then you cash out at a certain point in order to use right. them. Right. Okay. Yeah, most of the time you're gonna wanna wait as long as you can, but you might get to a point where you need you need it so you don't die. Um, <laughs> okay, and then the scaly foot snail will grow. Um, so two for stone, yep, and one for heat. Okay. Okay, so um, let's go to the player two again. And let's have player two pick um, that first tile. Is that a... Oh, oh so I, I may have missed this, but oh yeah, the white smoker. So any Archaea that's on the tile actually stays on the tile. Yep, perfect. And then go ahead and place that anywhere on there. Okay, perfect. So just for fun, let's, let's put... Uh, would you mind putting three on every tile for that player just to kind of see what they can do? So we'll pretend this is later in the game. You've built up some, you're going to take actions. Yeah. Right. So, um, okay. So the top one, instead of growing, let's take it off. So we'll trigger that one. Yep. Perfect. You can see the, the symbol on there. And then the next one, uh, the white smoker, um, we'll do the same thing. And then uh, for the last one, let's, uh, okay, let's trigger the ability. So you pay three to the bank. Yep, you don't get to keep them. Pay them to the bank. And then the first thing it would do is destroy a shell. So let's say player one had a shell from an earlier turn. So shells are, are good are useful because um, if someone attacks you, you can spend a shell to block some of the attack. Yeah. Yeah, so you um, a, a shell blocks half damage um, from one attack. So uh, but this the goblin shark, so it's actually a bit thematic. So the goblin shark can actually break through shells and and defenses of creatures in the deep so he destroys one shell he'll destroy one shell of player one and then uh that little symbol that red symbol that means attack one so um player one actually every player in the game would lose one archaea from their personal supply okay and if yep. you don't have any okay. in your personal supply personal supply, you're done? You're out? What was that? If you have none in your personal supply, are you out? Or what? No, so if you run out, then you have to take a shortfall token. You can see them in the bottom right there. Um, okay. And then you get 10 immediately. It's sort of like a, uh, an emergency payday loan, right? <laughs> and then, uh, but if you, ever have, if you ever have to get a second one, then you're out of the game. Okay. It's, it's somewhat rare, though. I mean, it, it, if you're careful, then usually you don't, uh, you won't be eliminated. Right, because you um, know the tiles, are everyone else in play, you see what possibilities they have on their own turn. Uh, so you can play defensively to some degree and, and build up. We could have cashed right. off a tile instead of adding more to it. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So okay. one thing I want to mention is you'll notice there there's a lot of iconography in the game. And so I would highly recommend that uh, anybody playing this download the uh, the player aid that we just uploaded to Board Game Geek. And uh, it's also on our website. It'll show you each tile and all, all of the uh, um, the abilities that you'll need for each tile. One thing I love about the game is you can create these really powerful combos if you get the right combinations of tiles and um honestly the game is kind of how how much can you break it you know how 
can you make this ultimate combo that other players cannot stop or they can't defend against the combo? Um, it's a fairly aggressive game, but it's a, it's, it's, it's also pretty quick. So, um, you know, if you get eliminated, it's, you know, you play another game right after <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, oh, okay, you broke the game this time. Let's see if I can break it next time. Okay. Do you play through a certain number of turns or what is the game in trigger? Yeah. So once everybody has eight turns, then the game's over. And then, uh, whoever's remaining in the game, you'll count up. Uh, your Ar Ar Archaea. Uh, all the Archaea on your tiles, you count that up and then you keep half of it for your score. Okay. So you need to cash it in in order to actually get the full benefit. Okay. Right. Okay. Easy yeah. enough. Easy enough. Um, so what other, I don't know if you want to give other tile powers or other examples of what we haven't seen yet? Yeah, let's let's talk about some of the interesting powers there. So um, the giant, let's see, is there a giant squid right there? Oh, yeah. So the giant squid, he does, you pay three Archaea, Archaea from the tile, and then um, he attacks every player for four. Now, what's interesting is if you combine this tile with um, maybe a lanternfish tile, so the lanternfish tile, I don't know if he's if there's one available there. Um, the lanternfish tile can um, move cubes from, from its own tile onto the giant squid. So let's say that you had a couple of them next to it and you use those tiles to, to populate the giant squid and you kept sending cubes over to the giant squid um, one interesting thing is you can activate the giant squid. You can activate any tile more than once if you have enough um, if you have enough cubes. So let's right. say if you had nine cubes on the giant squid, you would attack everyone for twelve. Um, and if somebody, so that's just one example of a combo you could create, which would be very difficult to stop in the game. Uh, somebody might stop it by getting. The scaly foot snail, which allows you to get a bunch of shells in the game. Um, right. Now, there's another way to counter the giant squid strategy, and that is to get the uh, there's um, a sperm whale tile, and the uh, it's called the uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm looking at my tiles right here. <laughs> Okay, so the bull catch a lot. If you have the, yep, exactly. If you have this tile, um, he can decimate a giant squid. So you can see you, you can pay five and then everyone with a giant squid has to flip that tile over because in nature, the, the, the bull catch a lot hunts the giant squid. So the giant squid can be really powerful, but there's a way to counter it. And there are a lot of things like that in the game where you, if somebody focuses too much on something, then somebody else can take advantage of it. Okay. And that's where the drafting comes into play because of course, yeah, do you draft defensively or build a strategy as you, as you go along? Do you make any adjustments to tiles in the game based on the player count or just shuffle it? Uh, you do not. The only thing that you adjust is the starting Archaea in the game. Okay. So if you start with um, more players, everybody starts with more Archaea because there are more attacks in the game. And that's to sort of balance that out so people can, you know, so not everyone gets eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Quick game on here. Um, so you mentioned this, This uh, I don't know if there's anything else to mention about the game or we just talk about it more generally. Yeah, that's great. So how did it come about in the first place? As you say, this is uh, based on real life environments, uh, unlike fantasy world, uh, other things that you've done in the past, but near and far or city of iron. Uh, how did it come about? So my uh, co-designer, T. Alex Davis, uh, he and I were sitting on an airplane back. We were coming from Gen Con last year, actually. And uh, we were, we were thinking, oh, it'd be fun to co-design a game. Um, we actually designed this game for uh, an event 
uh, BGX that sadly got canceled. Um, right. It was a game store event. So we were trying to design a game for that, and uh, we were suggesting themes, and uh, this was an idea that he came up with, and uh, I thought it would be awesome. And, you know, I'm really interested in science and, like, you know, real-life science things, even though we haven't made many games that really focus on that. Um, that excited me. Um, and it's, you know, it's a lot of these creatures, when I show people the game, they see the creatures and they're like, what the heck is, did, is this another fantasy game that you came up with these weird creatures? We're like, no, these are actual living creatures that you've never heard about. And that was one of the reasons we wanted to make the game. Okay. I, I know the rule book has explanations for... Uh, each of the tiles explaining what they do. I forget whether you give any background on the creatures at all. Sadly, we didn't this time. We wanted to. Okay. I was going to put it on the back of the tiles, but uh, we ended up deciding to keep it cleaner. We decided not to do that. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but so I guess we can inspire people to go look it up themselves. <laughs> you can do that. Um, uh, we have tons and tons of water jokes in chat. <laughs> mostly oh. with you know, yes gameplay is not watered down all, all those types of things <laughs> um someone is asking about player elimination and there is elimination because yes if you get a second one of those uh tiles where you had to borrow archaea then you're done but the game has eight turns or each so it goes fast right uh, and yes. the thing well, is it's unlikely you would be eliminated you know, even in the first half of the game, it would probably be near the end anyway. <laughs> and if you're eliminated, okay. you just played poorly. <laughs> okay, there we go. People will appreciate that when, when you say that to them. That's right. I'm sure they will, Try, yeah. Try better. <laughs> Try better. Don't do so poorly next time. Um, we got another minute or two. I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about. What's coming next? I mean, yes, as you say, this is for a special event where... Uh, local game stores were going to get titles first and be able to sell them. I believe it was a month before they were available elsewhere. Uh, it was a really interesting concept. And of course, uh, maybe another year we'll get to actually do it. Um, I don't know if you have anything else that you want to talk about coming from the coming in the future. Um, not, not really right now. It's been, uh, it's been kind of a, a difficult year to, to, uh, continue development, but, um, our next game is a, it'll be another storybook game. We're, we're working on it right now. So it'll be another fantasy game where we're going back to the fantasy settings, but um, it'll be, I'm very excited about it. So you and people can, can watch, um, we're doing some live streams on our YouTube channel today mm -hmm. uh, in an hour, I'll be doing some digital painting if anybody wants to watch that. All right, and what is your channel? It's uh, Ryan Lockett YouTube channel. There you go. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. I appreciate you coming on, talking about deep vents and giving people an overview of how to play.